Good morning, everyone. What's happening today? We are sewing again today. It's the first thing in the morning. I finished sewing last night. And I noticed that I'd broken one of the tubes on the on the tines. They seem to be a bit of a weak point on this cedar. So I just fixed it this morning. And we're just about to go down there and um, finish this paddock off. There's about, uh, I think there's, there's not quite a hectare left and then we've got the headlands to do this morning and then we'll bring the uh, tractor and cedar back here and I'm going to cut the loose in actually because it's meant to be hot for the next week, like over 30 degrees. So that'll be third cut, which is pretty good. Pretty happy about getting getting another cut off the loose and it's pretty good too. A little bit finer stalk this time, which is, um, yeah, which is good. Probably be a little bit better quality if we can get it. Yeah, no, this is what we're going into here. Pretty plenty of moisture down there. I'm sort of going down to my second knuckle on my finger there. See if we can find one here. There's one there. Can you see that? The tip of my finger. So it's about right. There's another paddock just about done. So this this oats variety, this is black butt, this stuff. Uh, it's pretty pretty common around here. We have also uh, grown some drover oats, I think the variety was before. It was pretty good stuff too, but yeah, the black black butt's just a pretty we just know it does well around here, so that's what we're we're, we're growing at the moment. We've sort of got probably six or seven ton last year and didn't manage to get hardly any of it in, so. It, uh, it's all left over from that. The mice gave it a little bit of a pizzling, some of the bags, but yeah, we sort of tried to keep it off the ground and covered fairly well. It wasn't plague numbers when I was pulling it out of the shed, just a couple really, but I got a bit of a funny video of the dogs, dogs and cat um, trying to catch a few. After this paddock, we'll, um, we'll take this tractor and see if we're back to, back to home and we'll be putting in some some, we've got some ryegrass and some raffno palatine it's called. I think I have talked about it before, but yeah, it's sort of a newer variety, sort of like a radish cross of kale. Uh, you may or may not have heard of it. It's Yeah, it's only been um, out for a couple of years, but we're gonna try and put some of that in, because that's really good for fattening lamb, so. Yeah, and then we've got some oats putting up at Doughboy as well. Uh, some wheat, and yeah, a couple of paddocks of We'll put into it permanent pasture, but that won't be till a bit later on. Yeah, there's still plenty to do. We're cracking along with it pretty well. We'll get the other cedar going again, probably in the in the oats uh, back up at Doughboy, just to make things go a bit quicker. So oats is pretty easy to put in. The old cedars, yeah, it's done a lot of work that John Shearer drill. It's, um, Dad bought it brand new, probably I'd have to be 20 years, 20, over more than 20 years ago. I, I don't know how old it is exactly, but it's done a lot of work. Yeah, this is the last of the paddocks that are sprayed out right now. There's there's another one getting sprayed today. Um, my contractor's doing that. But yeah, there's the, the, the next week is actually it, it's not it's meant to get up above 30 degrees every day. So we're probably going to do this paddock and maybe one more, and then we'll probably just hold off a bit. Uh, just seeing seeing what moisture is going to do. I can't see the, the temperature dipping on the forecast yet so if, you know if we keep getting 30 degrees it's going to dry things out pretty quickly and we sort of don't want you don't want you don't want to be sowing into dry dry dirt so yeah these are per, these are good conditions now so the seed will get up and going and there'll be plenty of moisture down low for it to get its roots into a bit of moisture so the oats will be right. The canola and triticale that we sowed um, probably in the last video at home that um, that'll be going well too. See it sort of it was sown and then um, into moisture and then it got another 12 mils the other night. So it'll the triticale will be nearly poking its head out now, I reckon. Now I don't know about everyone else, but I've just finished just finished all the headlands. I'm just about to take the tractor out the gate. But first of all, I've got to take all the the ute and the truck out because I just just can't can't leave a paddock and get the cedar out and then just drive around drive all over it with the ute and tractor it just yeah 
just annoys me seeing wheel marks in a freshly sewn paddock. So we'll take the Uton truck out and then we'll cover our cover our evidence. Alrighty, so we've got the mower on. I'm just heading down to the loose and to start cutting it. Yeah, as I said before, it's the weather forecast is looking yeah really good for hay. <laughs> Not so good for uh, emerging crops. Always got to have something to whinge about, I suppose. Oh, and by the way, there's still no aircon in this tractor, so <laughs> it's pretty warm sitting in here. Yeah, the the new unit's on on its way. It um, yeah, it's obviously it's coming from overseas, so I think it's going to take a couple of weeks. It's not much fun sitting in this glass box on a on a 32 degree day. So if it looks like I'm working hard, I'm I'm not really. I'm just sitting in a sauna. A few moo cows. We've actually got a few steers going this afternoon. I think there's 10, 10 steers going to Savo. They're a mix of Angus Cross Hereford and Herefords, or Pole Hereford. Well, anyone who's not from Australia, wombats, they might be cute, but they, gee, they cause some damage. So, here's the road here going to the loose, and, and they've obviously dug underneath it, and then I've been driving through it, and I fell in it the other day. Yeah, don't don't be fooled by the little critters. They're um, yeah, they're a right pain in the bum, to be honest. <laughs> Alrighty, so here's what we're dealing with here. This is the loosen. So it's pretty well, pretty well up. Uh, above my knee, uh, apart from or most of it, apart from that that um, bad yielding corner over there. But, but by the look of it, you can see how fine the, the stalk is. Well, I mean, I can see how fine it is compared to the last cut. Yeah, it's just starting to flower now, so it's um, about the right time to be cutting it. But yeah, you can see see that where I was just getting out to make sure it wasn't cutting it. Um, too short, which I'm not, you can see it um, shooting again down low there, so. Lucy, you still want to cut the crown out of it, uh, which, because that'll, that'll kill the plant. The crown's sort of right close down. Different varieties sort of vary a bit, I think, from what I gather, um, with the height of the crown. This one, Stamina GT6, is pretty low, low to the ground, but it's probably not so much a hassle when you're, when you're cutting it for hay. It's probably more when you're grazing it, because, um, well, the sheep, sort of they will graze it graze it right into the ground if they if they sort of you know get locked up on here for too long and, and then that's when you can kill the really hurt the loosen when they eat the crown out of it but yeah not going too badly done a few laps now I've been opening the door every now and then trying to trying to get some airflow happening through there but yeah still bloody warm. We're getting along nicely, I'm just getting out and checking checking things, checking gearboxes and making sure they're not you know burning hot or anything. Um, which they're not so that's good. Cut probably two or three or well, no more probably. Probably nearly halfway getting through it but the uh, the blades are getting a little bit dull but it's still cutting, cutting well enough. We've still got a, a bit left in them yet. It's just, um, these blades are cut a fair bit of hay now, so I have to think about changing them before next season. Well, 
Well, I've just had the drone up for five minutes and <laughs> did a couple laps. See if you can tell which row is the one, <laughs> the ones I had the drone up on. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> well, that solves that. Maybe men can't do two things at once. <laughs> oh, that's, that's woeful. Poor sheep that misses out on that bit of loosen. <laughs> Right, I've just pulled up but this tractor saying there's um, water in the fuel filter. So, been having a bit of trouble with this lately. Um, I think we must have got a bad batch of fuel and it's just setting off the sensor. Just got to drain the filter. There's just a little, little bit in the bottom, little drain at the bottom that lets the water out. It's been doing it, you know, for a couple of weeks now. So I'm thinking we're probably going to have to drain the fuel tank, unfortunately. Once we sort of slowed down a little bit with sewing and stuff and um, can it, like get the fuel tank low so a bit annoying but just one of those things. That seems to have fixed it. That's all loose and cut now though so that's good. No issues whatsoever until the end there when that tractor flayed up. But I might come back a bit later on and plow that bit over there. I've been meaning to do it this week, but it's just, um, we've been busy sewing and it's just been a bit hard, so. See? Wombats are a pain in the bum, the buggers. Look who jumped in the tractor as soon as I opened the door. Hey, Max, you missed the tractor ride, did you? I bet you wouldn't have when you found out there was no aircon in here. Hey, what do you reckon? Max? Hey. Yeah. Right, so Dad just rang. He just thought that um, the tanks on the troughs down here might be getting a bit, the tanks on the troughs might be getting a bit low. So I'm just gonna go out and check them and I've got a tank of fuel with me and if we were to pump some water up there, I'll start the pump just cause we don't want the cattle running out of water. Um, so I'm just gonna go do that now. I'm just gotta take this stuff off the back of my ute. Yeah, I think it might be getting low. We'll go put a bit of, we'll go put a bit of fuel in it. It's just up in that paddock. Oh, it's sort of fenced off. You can't really see the tanks up there, but we'll go and fill them up. Yep. Pretty well empty mags. So it's just a just a cheap pump, a Honda ripoff, pretty much. Just because it's sitting out the paddock here, and it seems to do a pretty good job, really, for what it for what it for what we paid for it. It's um yeah, it does does a good enough job. Good enough job. There we go. Dad's actually just down the front paddock there, spraying at the moment, spraying another paddock here. I think that's about 15 or 16 hectares, that one. That's the one that's failed in pasture a couple of times. We're gonna put ryegrass in uh, probably 10 hectares of it, and then uh, this Rafno Palaton in five hectares of it down this end here. So I'll show you a bit more about that when we're sowing it, but um, yeah, just that'll be to fatten some lambs on the Rafno Palaton. So here's the paddock of chicory. You can see it's all gone to head, but um, there's a fair bit of leaf still on the bottom there that, that um, is pretty good for these ram lambs. They seem to be enjoying it. So I'm just going back. I'm just poking back to have a look at some the triticale that we sowed, well, what is it? Probably five or six days ago now, I think. See if it's germinated, which see if it's germinated or not. I think it probably should have by now. So this has had 12 mils of rain on it since it uh, since it was sown, which it'd be loving. Start having a bit of a dig. Oh, there's one. There is the first sign of a bit of triticale. If you can see that, if we dig a little bit deeper, you'll see. So in what five days 
it's gone from just being a seed to that which is pretty cool to think about and it was just emerging out of the soil there now so down the bottom or at the top there down the bottom there's the roots obviously it's getting down and accessing that moisture and nutrients and then it's putting out its uh, what would you call it emerging leaf um, and it's just poking up through the soil ready to start capturing some light what do you reckon can I get a cool photo for the gram or not So if we dig down a little bit, you can see what I what I mean by by putting the seed in at the right depth because that, that top little that top couple of centimetres has just dried out enough that it um you know there probably isn't enough moisture there for, for a seed to germinate. So that's why that's why with the canola it's just a bit iffy, you just gotta pick your timing a bit and make sure that you know there's there is rain coming in the in the next day or two or you know you're going straight into moisture because because this canola is only going in that that such that that such shallow depth, it um, yeah, it can be a can be a big risk. So I've just come out on the bike and Maggie to um, get some of these little rogue uh, stud ewe lambs off this this other paddock of canola that we sowed just before it starts emerging too, which I don't think it would have. But we'll have a look. Uh, I just got to shift them back into that paddock. Oh, I think there's a gate open to be honest, so I'll go and go and check that and make sure there's um, not a big hole in the fence too. Where's your map? Big girl. Ow, is this thistle there? Where's your map? Ah, uh, don't you go through that fence, you bugger. Where's your map? There is a big hole in the fence. Right here. Yeah, to be honest, this bit of fence needs replacing. Uh, or tightening anyway just now that we've got a crop in here so I might have to do that in the morning we'll go have a look at this canola hey yeah you can see the little they're a bit of a different they're not that shaped leaf they're um that one down in the soil there they're just starting to come out now there's another one I don't know how well the GoPro picks it up it's a bit um She's not real flash on the close-ups, the GoPro, so I can always zoom in and later though. But yeah, no, it's coming up too. So there's a, only a little paddock. This one, there's about four hectares in here. But anyway, guys, that's gonna, I think that's going to be the end of another video. I hope you, in, hope you enjoyed that one. It's exciting times with um, the crops starting to come up. So keep watching along and uh, see what see how they perform. Yeah, things are, things are looking pretty good at the moment in terms of weather and, and rain and, and stuff. So we'll see what happens. It can all change though. It might not rain again now for another couple of years. But <laughs> each day is a day closer to the next drought. So sort of got to always be thinking about that. But anyway, guys, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, we'll catch you in the next one. Alrighty, see ya. Bye.